What's up everybody, it's Parallax Abstraction and welcome to PXA Peaks at Butcher. Oh yeah, you guys want to see some crazy 2D gore? Yeah, just take a look at that title screen, you get what I'm talking about here. This is a game that comes to us from a small, well they're a virtual team technically, but I believe they're based in Europe called Transhuman Design, who've actually made a few different games that are all very, very different from each other, and well, this one's no exception. Uh, if I were to describe this game, I would probably call it a 2D side-scrolling quake, maybe? Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. It's also brutally difficult, as you saw also from the title screen there. So pay no mind to this game time thing down here. I'm not sure what happened. I think an update or something reset the clock, because I've definitely played longer than that. Though I haven't necessarily gotten that far yet. I'm actually going to start this game over so that you guys can get an idea of the mechanics here. So, yeah. This is not a game for children. Let's just put it that way, alright? So, yeah. This game, uh, it is only on the PC at the moment. Uh, I, you play it principally with the keyboard and mouse. It does have what they call experimental gamepad support. Which, yeah, is definitely not the ideal way to play it. And you'll see why. So you have a couple of different control schemes here you can pick from, uh, or you can just skip and use your own, which is nice. I like that. Uh, this is a 2D, very pixel art game, so there's not much in the way of graphic options, but also this thing will run on just about anything you, you can throw it at, which is also kind of cool. So I'm going to go with the standard one because I've gotten used to that. So yeah, as the title screen implied, the lowest difficulty is hard. Yeah, and as you can see here, it sort of breaks things out. Your health goes down, med you lose medkits and armor, and then Impossible is still locked, which I can't even friggin' imagine, because even on the normal difficulty, this game will kick the living crap out of you. So yeah, I really love this art style. It looks like it was done in, like, the software render mode of Quake or something like that. I don't really know what the story is to this game. There isn't much of one. It's basically you're going down to invade a planet and purge people. Uh, you are the butcher here. I don't think you're a good guy. Let me just put it that way. But this takes place in some nightmarish dystopian space future. You know, it's very brown, very rust colored. Uh, you know, it very much inspired, you can tell, by those old school first person shooters. But I dig that. You know, I'm, I'm cool with that. So here we go. All right. So there we go. So it starts you right off. Eventually there will be... Um, sort of a hub world that you can get to, but this is sort of the tutorial area here. So there's not much to this game in terms of control. You jump with this, you, you uh, jump with uh, W, you move around with ASD, you kick with the uh, right mouse button, you fire with the left mouse button, and you target this way. Whee! And then when you're on platforms like this, you can press down to drop down between things. That's pretty much the, the, the bulk of it. Now, you see four levels here. So, don't let that fool you. There are only four levels, but there's sub-levels within each one. And this game is so damn hard that, believe me, it's going to take you hours to get through them four levels. Trust me. Uh, okay, so, you're sort of getting the idea here. So, you have uh, a variety of weapons at your disposal. I only have two right now. But your goal is to, well, get through the level, get to the end, and kill everybody. Also, yeah, guys in this die in the most grotesque of ways. When you hit them with a gun, they don't really die for the most part because... Oh, God, because you see they'll do things like that. A lot of them won't stay... Uh, won't die right away either. Like, you'll actually hear them sort of screaming in agony, and you can either leave them, you can shoot them some more, or you can walk up and kick them as well. Like I said, this game... Yeah, this game is a this game is a is a brutal bugger. I'll tell you that right now. There's also just like those old games. There's hidden secrets in the different levels as well. There's skulls that you can pick up. Uh, I don't know what you really get for them other than uh, bragging rights. I'm not sure if they unlock things or not. I haven't really been able to determine that as yet. Um, and then when you see a button, you can press this and interact with it. So there's the skull down there. I believe. Whoop. Also, guys will transport in because. Yeah, of course they will. I, I don't know why that happens either. Uh, there will be armor and health power-ups that drop, though they are fairly sparing. And uh, you've got to be... You, you can't count on them. That, that That's for sure. They are not going to save your ass. So each of the little sub-levels in this is generally relatively small. They're almost like... They're not really combat puzzles because, you know, it's just a kill... Okay. It's just a kill everyone scenario, right? It's not really it's not really a puzzle, but they, they are they are encounter based. They're relatively small, they're relatively small arena levels and you can approach them in a number of different ways. There's no 
So. Yeah. So he's not dead yet. Guys, in the, this game this game is pretty dark. Okay, let's I, I just want to make that clear here. This game is dark as all get out. And I'm perfectly fine with that. I think that's actually pretty awesome. To be frank about it, I'm kind of surprised this game hasn't gotten a whole bunch of uh, hand-wringing articles written about it about how problematic it is. But anyway. Um, so yeah, there's are basically just little... Uh, whoops. Shoot, I forgot about that. So these are little uh, arena set pieces. And there are multiples of these per actual level that you have to get through. So... Uh, none of these are terribly long, but because they're so difficult, you will be restarting them a lot. There are no checkpoints. You have to finish one of these little sub-levels before you get to move on. And if you die, you do the whole thing again. There's no extra lives, there's no continues, there's no nothing like that. This is very old school in its design mentality. Which is great, as someone who grew up with old school, you know, old school balls hard shooters, I think this is really, really cool. Uh, but again, of course, it's not for everybody. This is a game that was designed to fill a niche. Let's just uh, let's just put it that way. But and you know, it's it's very simplistic visually, but at the same time, like it, it kind of reminds me of a game like Soul Dat or something like that. That's a game that's been around for a long time, and uh, it, you know, sort of an arena combat thing as well. That has this very. It, it's interesting because it's not just. I fell in lava because I'm a moron. Good job, Parallax. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a very old school aesthetic, and that you know, it's 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 pixel art, and it's so pixely that you know each character is only made up of a few of them. Frankly, you know, th this is not uh, the character models and things like this in this game are not the most complicated art style, and yet at the same time, it still conveys things very well. Like it's a simplistic kind of Art style, yes, but there's still no doubt whatsoever about the level of brutality in this thing, you know? I still don't know how to get that skull. There's a couple of levels where I have gotten all the skulls, but I just, I don't get this one at all. Uh, Alright, so this opened this elevator. You can also kick items in the world, of course, and uh, they can actually uh, damage enemies, too, if you kick them in the right way. So there we go, that level's done. So it's saying game time here because I restarted, so that's going to reset. And now we move on to the next one. So you see now we are in the first major level, which is the Ironworks facility, and we're into the second level of that. And I got an assault rifle, so just like an old school first person shooter, use the mouse button and you can switch between everything. Uh, you have your chainsaw, which never runs out of ammo, but other guns will run out of ammo on a regular basis, and you don't necessarily have the biggest maximum ammo count in the universe here so you got to manage stuff and be prepared to run out of ammo uh, very regularly nah son so that's like a machine thing that i opened up there that does that so some of these enemies have jetpacks some of them will charge at you some of them uh, actually have their own uh, melee stuff the chainsaw is a very risky thing. It gives you possibly the most gratifying kills in the world, but at the same time, it's... You gotta get right in a dude's face. Hang on, I picked the wrong thing. Uh, it doesn't take a lot to kill a guy with it either, but you gotta, you gotta get right up in their face, and it is very, very dangerous, to put it mildly. So, but let's do this. Oh, yeah. I still love it. Still love it. Alright, so let's get through here. And you see guys explode in crazy ways. And that's what I like about this. This art style is incredibly simplistic, but it's it's a proof case of how graphics don't have to be fancy to convey a sense of absolute, like, just savagery and brutality, right? Like, this game is graphic, it is pretty disgusting, and... You know, I, I wouldn't blame you if you played this and were kind of like, oh god, this is this is this is horrible. And uh, that's what they were aiming for, and I think it's really cool. It, it it is old school yet visceral in a way that you just don't oh I think I missed this skull before. Oh word? And it's the only secret in this level. Alright, I did okay. So you see, again, that's a very old school thing too, level secrets. You know, you don't need them, but it's, it's, that you get that little twinge of, uh, extra uh, dopamine when you get them. You're like, yeah! Gonna... There we go, I'm just gonna kick that guy. So you may have seen that little, uh, sort of white 
uh, symbol over his head. So that's a stun symbol. Obviously, the enemies in this are pretty durable. They can sometimes take multiple hits. But if you hit a guy, especially with a shotgun or a melee, you can stun him. Uh, which will, it, it, which doesn't last long, but it can last just long enough to give you a little bit of an edge up. And that is very, very critical. Uh, you're going to need that a lot uh, as things progress. Some of these combat arenas will get e e exceptionally challenging. The later levels in this will, will kick your ass, even on the default difficulty. And that's what this game is aiming for. It's aiming for old school, super tough, uh, super challenging so extermination, so this, uh, an extermination is just, uh, it's very simple. It locks you in a room, you gotta kill everybody before you can move on. That's pretty much the, uh, the end of it. Guys will teleport in. Again, I don't know why enemies have this ability. I, you know, we're in the, we're in the future here, so I guess teleportation technology exists. Sometimes ammo and armor and health will drop in, because of course they will. There are various levels of armor and health pickups that will give more and more stuff. Typically, the bigger ones will, are part of these extermination challenges and will, will pop in later. And you can overcharge your health as well, like you could in, in uh, something like Doom or Quake as well. If you have the means, you can, you can sort of overclock yourself there. Uh, but it doesn't tick down like those games do. As you see, it stays permanent, which is a little handy as well. There we go. So I look like I'm doing not so horrible here, and that's basically because I played these levels through, but uh, I'm in the third world at, in my main game at this point. Well, I guess I lost that progress. You can't keep multiple profiles, which is kind of a bummer, but uh, so I'm in the sort of third world. So here's another extermination area. And as you can see, because I activated that thing, there's also environmental hazards to deal with. But the thing that's great about this game is that it's inherently fair. Those big fire jets, they'll hurt the enemies too. If the enemies go into them, they will get their ass burnt as well. And that is very satisfying when you're able to aggro and pull them around the map to the degree where they are actually, uh, you, you know, you're actually able to use the environment against them as well. You know, one thing I always hate is games where, oh jeez, the one thing I always hate is games where the... You know, this is one of the reasons I don't like a lot of J, uh, JRPGs is I don't like games where they spend a lot of time establishing rules and limitations and then make it at certain points so that the enemies are just immune from them. Uh, th that's just not fair and it's frustrating when you're kind of like, well, why did you bother teaching me all these rules if you're not going to make them apply equally? This doesn't do that. The rules apply to everyone uh, in, in the same way possible and it is a, it is a great time. And I, I don't know, you know, the AI in this game is not the smartest thing in the world, nor, oh, damn it, nor does it have to be, but I have seen some things like enemies, try, when they see a fire jet starting, you may have seen it there before, where an enemy tried to avoid it, so they seem to have a certain degree, they're not the, the kind of ultra dumb enemy that will just run, rush headlong into certain death, they, they seem to have a, enough of a core base of intelligence that they they know to try to avoid you know the patently obvious bad things which is which is cool it's nice to see that they did that but yeah uh this is a game as i said it's 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 a niche to a certain degree it's catering to people who like not only old school aesthetics but old school gameplay who want a super hardcore challenge and you know what? It's not for everyone, but I love this. I th this this as someone who grew up in the Doom and Quake era when those games were new, this tickles that kind of itch. This is a game I could easily have seen being on DOS PCs in the 90s, uh, and it would have been all manner of controversial back then. Like I said, I'm kind of surprised this hasn't raised a certain uh, uh, the ire of certain um, uh, easily offended types. Let's put it that way. Uh, but. This is the kind of thing that I would have spent a ton of time on back in that era and that I would have just had a, a ton of fun with. And uh, this is definitely the case. If you're super good at it, it's probably not going to be super long unless you want to play it over multiple times on multiple difficulties. But I think it's... Um, I mean, I've spent a good while on this. I probably spent a couple of hours on it so far and, I, and was just getting just getting destroyed in the third uh, the third world, that's for sure. The third world, that sounds weird, but the third uh, major level, I guess. Uh, and this is on the default difficulty level. Like, on the high levels where you have less health and less uh, and no pickups available, I can't even imagine. Like, the, the, the health and armor pickups are the only reason I'm having a hope in hell of surviving this, uh, this game as it is, so... I can also see this being uh, having a, a very big appeal for speedrunners as well, because there is a little bit of RNG in it, 
Oh, there we go. I got the Pyromaniac achievement, which is set... I believe it's either 100 or 500 enemies on fire, so that's cool. I like that. Um, yeah, it would be cool if they had... Uh, to, it would be really neat to see some speed runs of this, because it does have a little bit of RNG. But obviously, if you know the best way to strategize, you could you could chug through this thing real fast. Um, which would be very interesting to see. Something like a scoring system or an arcade mode with leaderboards would be kind of cool as well. Uh, it doesn't really have anything like that. It doesn't need it, but it's one of those things where you're kind of like, you know, if you ever wanted to do an add-on or uh, if they want to do a Butcher 2 or something like that, having an arcade mode where, yeah, you're rewarded score based on not only maybe how quickly you kill enemies, but how quickly you progress through the levels, you know, maybe awarded bo bonus points for stylish kills, like, for example, getting an enemy caught in that fire jet. Things like that. That would be actually a, a, a really cool idea to, and have some online leaderboards with that. Uh, that's something I could probably really get into. Uh, you know, some of the bigger first-person shooters out there have done that kind of thing. Actually, I think the new Doom added a mode like that very recently, which, uh, you know, I, I like ideas like that. I think, I, I you know, anything that arcadifies it a little bit. Even something like co-op might be kind of cool. Uh, I could see that sort of breaking the flow of this. Uh, but it would be interesting if you could have multiple multiple players, especially if, uh, you know, it scales to having multiple players. That could be interesting. I mean, that given that you're usually sort of tied to a single environment uh, or a single room at most given times, I could see that being possible, even just local co-op. Uh, but obviously, they would need to get gamepad support working for that. And like I said, there is gamepad support in this, but it's kind of... Eh, it's, it's a little wonky. So hopefully they could get that done. I mean, if they could make the gamepad support work as fluidly as the mouse and keyboard, this could actually be a pretty cool game to have on consoles. Uh, you know, I could I could dig that. Uh, because obviously it's incredibly graphic, but there are more graphic games out there that look much more realistic than this does. I mean, anybody who thinks that this game in any way represents real life is just, well, nuts. But, you know. All right, there we go. But uh, I've been having a ton of fun with this, and... Uh, it, it will, you know, if you want to just sort of blast your way through it, you can, but there's tons of secrets to find. There's, you know, there's time, there, there's uh, being able to beat things in, uh, in a timing manner or doing it quickly if you want. You know, there's a variety of enemies, a variety of weapons. There's a number of different ways in which you can, man in which you can uh, manage the combat situation. So there's actually a surprising amount of depth here. And yeah, despite the fact that it looks like a game from the 90s, God, it's viscerally disgusting in a way that I I, I positively I positively love. Uh, no, that's not the way to that. That's not the way to that skull. So you see, I, I tend to rely on the shotgun a lot just because the assault rifle, while it's faster, it doesn't do a lot of damage and it, it doesn't tend to stun enemies either. So you have to kind of watch yourself with that. But. Um, yeah, I have been enjoying. Uh, I have been enjoying the hell out of this, and uh, yeah, it's a small game by a small team that's uh, focused on on doing a particular core element. Oop. Oh, I didn't expect to see that. Uh, that's focused on doing a core element uh, of itself very, very well, and uh, it it does a uh, it does a really, really nice job in my opinion. Uh, these guys knew what they were going for. And uh, they did something very well. And frankly, it's it's really impressive when you look at the other things that transhuman design has made. Uh, that I, I always find it very fascinating when I see a developer that is able to do huge variety. And when you look at their website, these are the guys who made a game that some people know called King Arthur's Gold. Uh, which is kind of a, a game that's focused on both combat but also construction. They're also making a, uh, a story-based game right now that I can't remember the name of. I don't believe it's out yet, but they're making like a they're making like a story-based uh, uh, narrative game with a completely different art style, like a almost like a, a a pencil art style or something like that. That uh, looks really cool as well. So this is a team that is clearly multifaceted and multi-talented, and is not de clearly not content on pigeonholing themselves, uh, which is something I I always really enjoy to enjoy seeing. Um, and they clearly got some talent because any team that's able to make games like this in crazy multiple genres and do well at it uh, is a team worth paying attention to because that's not something you see very often. Pe they, there are teams out there that either try to do multiple genres of games and do so badly or that just decide to focus on one thing. And that's not what these guys have done, which um, 
I think is very, very cool. But uh, yeah, I really like this game. Um, you know, don't, don't, if you want something that's easy, don't get it. Uh, you know, if you're not into this art style, you might not like it, but uh, I'm into both the challenge and the uh, 2D brutality. So I think this is a great time. So yeah, that is Butcher, developed and published by Transhuman Design in 2016. It is on Steam right now for, damn it, for uh, $10 US, which I think is a, I think is a steal, frankly. Uh, I'm not sure if it's on other platforms, but you can see that uh, on Steam if it is. Uh, and if you can buy this, uh, I don't know if you can get this at other places, but if you can, I'll put links to the description uh, below the video as well. And if you buy from those places, a tiny piece of your purchase would go to help support my channel, which I would appreciate very much. And yeah, obviously, if you like the, what you saw here, please consider liking the video and subscribing. That also helps me out a great deal. But uh, yeah, I got some more dudes to murder. So take it easy, guys, and I'll see you next time.